So in talking about the mechanism of low-ring barrier opening, we need to understand cavitation. And cavitation describes oscillation of microbubbles um, under the influence of ultrasound. Uh, we can have stable cavitation and inertial cavitation. Stable cavitation uh, describes the uh, change in the bubble size without collapse. And this creates mechanical forces on the walls of the um, capillaries that results in increased blood-brain barrier permeability. Inertial cavitation describes um, <clears throat> um, the change in the micro bubble size or bubble size that results in uh, collapse and these two significant mechanical forces that can result in um, vessel injury. And um, essentially this process is, is not desirable when we are um, trying to have controlled blood-brain barrier opening. This is a cartoon that illustrates how blood-brain barrier occurs. Uh, you have uh, an injection of microbubbles intravenously that are pushed along the capillaries with each um, cardiac output. And when the microbubbles come under the exposure of ultrasound, they oscillate and uh, they expand and contract in size, exerting mechanical forces, again, on the vessel walls that leads to um, it leads to increased permeability of the blood brain barrier. And how this occurs in greater detail is in reduction of the tight junctions that form uh, the blood brain barrier, as well as a failure of other uh, uh, regulatory aspect of blood brain barrier. Um, take tight junction uh, changes, for instance. These are EM studies and immuno studies that show are a new reduction of important proteins that make up. Um, the tight junction, including occludin, claudin, and ZO1. And uh, when we uh, use focus ultrasound to um, open the blood-brain barrier, one of the great advantages, again, is being able to select our target uh, of drug delivery. Uh, this is a really nice study in large human primates, uh, which show that we can open the blood-brain barrier in both superficial targets as here, as well as deeper targets like here. Um, this is demonstrated by the extravasation of gadolinium, which otherwise does not cross the blood brain barrier that is intact. And it shows up uh, as a hyper intensity on MRI. And we see that uh, the area of extravasation is quite homogeneous. And um, this uh, suggests that the drug delivery can uh, be similarly achieved in a homogeneous fashion. The extent of blood-brain barrier uh, opening can be modulated by a variety of factors. Um, they can be um, uh, modulated by adjusting the ultrasound pressure, um, as well as the duration, as well as um, microbubble concentration. These are uh, factors that can be easily adjusted to achieve the desired blood-brain barrier permeability um, uh, change. Other factors that are important in determining um, how, um, how much blood brain barrier opening occurs is the vessel density or uh, uh, tissue property um, of the target itself. This is a study done in animals uh, that demonstrates an increased level of Herceptin or Trastuzumab, uh, which is a monoclonal antibody to HER2 receptor um, with um, increasing acoustic pressure. So at 0.6 uh, to 0.8 megapascals, there's significantly increase in the level of uh, uh, trastuzumab concentration at the target tissue. So just to overview the advantages and disadvantages of FASB opening in comparison to other techniques, some of the advantages in the, to the fact that uh, when we're trying to deliver a drug with focused ultrasound, we uh, we don't uh, have to necessarily modify the drug itself. Um, this, is, put, this process is um, potentially very cost, uh, uh, costly and um, can in fact change the desired effect of the drug on the target tissue. Uh, so in effect, if we were to successfully develop method of opening the blood barrier um, using focus ultrasound, we can simply combine that process with drug uh, administration itself. The other advantages um, of focused ultrasound uh, drug delivery includes being able to spatially select and be specific about the area that we want the drug to be delivered to. 
the volume of uh, BV opening or drug delivery is customizable and be contoured um, to the area that um, anatomical area that we uh, we want. And this is particularly relevant when we think about delivering drug to areas like the patamen uh, or um, the hippocampus or uh, deep areas like the brainstem where we might want drug delivery only to a specific anatomic target and not to the areas around it. Um, and as demonstrated by, a previ by the previous studies in non-human primates, uh, the delivery of drug um, as um, uh, a delivery of uh, gadolinium, which is a surrogate marker for, the, uh, for drug, is quite homogenous. Some of the disadvantages of FUS, on the other hand, include the fact that we do have to administer the drug systemically. Um, and this may not be suitable for certain compounds where um, uh, the, uh, the drug might be very quickly washed out, um, where previous systemic administration had not been tested. The BV opening is a procedure itself that patients have to undergo, and blood-brain barrier opening um, has been shown to be associated with inflammation, uh, which is uh, underlying a disease process in, in certain neurological disorders like Alzheimer's. So its long-term effect um, on, these, um, on these conditions is a, is a continued area of research. One of the main advantages of focus ultrasound um, is the fact that there is robust animal data to support its translation into clinical research. So uh, this, these figures uh, show and summarize the body of work that's been done in animal models from small animal rodents uh, to large uh, models, including porcine, non-human primates, and sheep that show the safety and uh, feasibility of blood-brain barrier opening. It's really important to have large animal models because um, the uh, skull is more, a better recapitulation of the human skull itself, um, and thus be able to inform um, the initial parameters that are selected for human studies. On the right, the figure um, summarizes some of the targets that have been tested in animal studies. And um, of note, many of these targets are areas that are quite sensitive and eloquent including the hippocampus and the brainstem, areas that other techniques like um, infusion catheters would really have challenges in being able to deliver um, uh, and, and significant risk accompanied to, to it in terms of delivering drugs into these areas.